But one significant development is the issue of sustainability. That increasingly foundations and trust are finding that um, there is no end to writing checks and we want to build capability in your donor organisation. And as a result, um, a new form of organisation has evolved which is called social enterprise. Social enterprise essentially says um, I have a business model that is able to bring social impact and because I have a business model, it allows for sustainability. And so with the initial investment that is put in, say, by a venture philanthropist, either through a loan right, or uh, resource aid, uh, you are able to sustain the organization's uh, social so-called outreach in the long haul. And then you can go on and fund another organization. So with the same money that you have, you are able to touch many more lives. Um, and that is the sustainability drive that we have been seeing in the last 10 years or so. And increasingly, this has uh, become more important because the, with the last global financial crisis, um, more people are falling below the poverty line. And this is a very um, so-called much of a concern going forward, for both for governments as well as for the people sector, that if this problem is not resolved, to, to bring people up above the poverty line, uh, there will be increasing social unrest in Asia, especially when all these emerging economies are struggling with the income gap. Um, the reason is because the rich have become richer and the poor have become poorer. And it is this distinct difference or increased gap between the rich and the poor that is actually creating and driving that need for philanthropic funds flow. So on one hand, you have a lot of people with a lot of money. On the other hand, you have a lot of people, increasingly a lot of people, that needs the money. Right, in order to survive. Now, how one can facilitate the flow from those who have to those without would be the philanthropic uh, sector that we are talking about. In Asia, we have a challenge because of governance issue and because most of the time things are not transparent. Because it, is in, the, yeah, it is in the culture. When you have trust, for example, in the old days, um, the philanthropic roots in Singapore used to take off and it was built on trust in the community. So in the 19th century, when our forefathers came, it was a mode where it was a self-help kind of model. So we have the Jews, we have the Arabs, we have the Indians and the Chinese, and they all come to Singapore, settle in, and they help their own ethnic group. So it was a community-based kind of model whereby I help my own kind. There has always been a relationship between philanthropy and social innovation. Traditionally, philanthropic organisations fund projects that immediately provide benefits to communities in need. They do not normally fund the processes upstream of that, the thinking and the working out, the research, the testing that may lead to these services or products in society. But in recognition of the world becoming more complicated, society becoming more complex, and that things cannot work in as linear fashion as they used to. I think not only has the idea of social innovation emerged to represent um, that level of thinking that enables complex problems to be solved, but it also means that phil philanthropists have the opportunity, if they choose to, to invest their resources at a level which is upstream from where service is delivered. So this is where um, the new philanthropy, if you like, uh, might have relevance to social innovation, where moving away from what we used to call checkbook philanthropy, where um, people with money give grants to organizations to do good work. Now we would like to see, and we are seeing more philanthropists investing in the upstream portions of the social innovative process. And that is very powerful because it is in having extremely good basic and applied research, the ability to bring together multiple stakeholders, the ability to catalyze thinking, ingenuity and ideas, and the ability to test and to validate 
that the best solutions for society are found. And it may not even be one solution per issue. Um, that process, being highly complicated in itself, could give rise to any number of different solutions that may even transcend the original issue that it was designed to think about in the first place. So if money were to be invested in that process, it is potentially very much more powerful than money which is used simply to fund the providing of service. Not to say that is unimportant. Obviously, once a solution has been tested and validated and rolled out, we do need a funder to make this happen. We do need a funder to reach out to the people who need the help. But there is another level now that we should focus on.